So I appreciate her. They were childhood friends. I, pre I just, amen. That's a blessing. Love him with your life. All right, let's get into this real quick. And I'm going to be out your way. As Christians, the problem that many of us face in our walk is what? The love of the world. Many of us love the world so much until we cannot give it up for the sake of Christ. There are things in our lives we know are bothering us spiritually. And we keep them there because we love them so much. Amen. Oh, yeah. Your music collection. Let me start there. There are songs in your playlist that you know when you hear that song, you hear Willie <laughs> or Deidre, whatever their names are. <laughs> I'm just thinking of some random names, random names. But you know, you thinking of them and what went down to that song. You keep that song in your playlist knowing that that song is going to lead you down a path of temptation. That means you love that song. You love the world. Amen. 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 Yeah. No, it's bad for you. Some movies you should never watch again. Why the Players Club DVD still in your Blu-ray? You know you should never watch that movie again. Can I get a, y'all just gonna, y'all gonna leave me out here. Yeah, there's certain things in your life that you gotta just, I can't do that, I can't watch that, I can't go there, I can't go with y'all. Something rises up in me, changes my life, make me start thinking of stuff that I shouldn't think of. But some people are just so in love with the world that they just can't do that. And those are the people that will continue to struggle in that area. Amen? Amen. To progress in Christ means you gotta cut certain things off. And it's never nothing that you don't like. You already cut that off. <laughs> it's the stuff you like and you want that you have to remove out of your life so that you can love God and not the world. First John 2 and 16, for all that is in the world is what? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That is the world that he's talking about when he says love not the world. Loving the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. None of this is of the Father, but it is what? It's of the world. Amen? Amen? The love of things can hurt us and our walk with the Lord if we value our own lives more than we value the lives of others. Then we are not where Christ wants us to be. So when you begin to love yourself, I mean, when you begin to love the world, then you start forgetting about people. Yeah, because the things you love, somebody's getting hurt in that process. Yeah, yeah. That song that you won't get out of your playlist is destroying somebody's life. Folk get in your car and hear it. Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah, yeah. Person doing them scenes in the movie, that's somebody's child. That's somebody's daughter. That's somebody you are not caring about. So that you can have that. So you begin to hurt other people. This is why it's so important for us to not love the world. Because then it makes us an enemy of other people. Yeah. Folks that want to make it to the top. They don't care who they destroy. But you have to destroy people. Step on people to do that. When that desire is in you. Amen. That was Lucifer's desire. Lucifer in Isaiah 14 and 11, he wasn't thinking about anybody but himself. I will lift myself up. He wasn't thinking I'm going to get cast out and I'm going to ruin millions of lives because of this I'm trying to do. Billions, yeah. But the love of things can hurt us in our walk with the Lord. If we value our own lives more than we value the lives of others, we, then we are not where Christ wants us to be. 1 John 2 and 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are what? In the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. He's just not saved. You love the world, you're not saved. You know, I know that's not politically correct in this time. Oh, brother, you can't judge. The Bible says. 
If any man, what? Love the world, the love of the Father is what? How are you going to heaven without the love of the Father? You don't even go around your own father because you don't like him. Uh-oh. You know, I'll step right in it. Why are you looking at me? People tend to look out for themselves more than they do others, but Christ always cared for the needs of others above his own. In our marriages, on our jobs, and in every walk of life, we must do what? You won't divorce if you love others as yourself. Because you're divorcing yourself. You decide to work that out before you divorce if you truly carry the love of God in that relationship. Look, somebody, but we don't get along. Ah, well, that's, that's not one of the fruits of the Spirit, not getting along. Fruit of the Spirit, suffering long is one of the fruits of the Spirit. If you feel with the spirit, you're supposed to be filled with the fruit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, all those things. You're supposed to be filled with those things. Amen. Tired of these folks speaking in tongues and hating folks. Amen. A Hindu can speak in tongues. You know, they speak in eloquent tongue. Tongue come out and slap you while they're doing it. Tongues don't impress me, bro. Where are the fruit of the Spirit? They want tongues to be the evidence, but anybody can do that. The real evidence is the what? The fruits. How are you acting? That's how I know you feel. Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah. Matthew 9 and 36. But when he saw the multitude, Jesus was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad. So he felt sorry for them. So he always cared about the people. Always. And that's supposed to be our attitude. We should care about one another that way. Amen? So in your relationship, if you care about your, you're going to work it out. Amen? People just come to me, man, you know, man, my marriage, man. I said, well, what's wrong, man? I don't know, man. We just can't seem to. I'm like, are y'all grown? Can, can we start with forgiveness? The basic foundation of Christianity, the thing that makes you safe is forgiveness. Can we start there? Then can you let stuff go? Because if you don't let it go in a relationship, when you leave the relationship, you're still going to have it. You're going to take it to the next relationship. You might as well make that one work. Because it's still you wherever you go. Amen. Boy, I'm not getting no amen. This is a dry pool. They want to hear Martin sing again. Y'all want me to stop? I'd like to do that too. <laughs> yeah, I can hear some more of that. Amen. But yeah, but as, I mean, if we, we just have to be, be we, you know, we look so much and act so much like the world now, the world has lost respect for the church. Yeah, we have just as many divorces as the world. Just as many abortions. Just as much fornication and adultery. Just, just as much. Cussing and Christians cuss now. When I was young, man, if you said a cuss word and you supposed to have been a Christian, you got whooped by everybody in the church. And then got home when they called, when the Sunday school teacher called home and told them what you did, you got a whooping when you got home. Y'all remember that? Because Christians didn't cuss. That was what the world did. But you didn't watch so many movies. You don't even watch a movie unless it's rated R. You know, just sat up and ingested all that cussing and know you can't handle it. You came out of cussing. Why are you watching cussing? Then as soon as you get, amen, as soon as you get mad at your wife or your husband, you start cussing at the person you love. You cussing at yourself. But we do it so much now, there's just no difference. So, like, what we used to be able to witness as, as far as the hope of someone changing, that is dissipating because they aren't seeing the change in those of us that are supposed to be believers. They have to see the change. You can talk about the change all you want. 
But they need to see the change. There need to be some visible signs of a transformation. Well, it's the truth. Amen. Yeah, it gets uncomfortable when you preach a holiness message. But the holiness message is like a product. You know, it, it puts up boundaries. And there's a reason. Ain't nobody trying to stop your fun. We're just questioning why your fun always sin. Why your fun always linked to the club? Everything. Every time you think it up, your fun is old whiskey breath. Only time you having fun. The word of God tells us that in the last days, the love of many shall do what? Wax cold. We're seeing that now, especially with this vaccine, all this kind of stuff. Man, I mean, love is waxing cold. Folks don't want you around them. You got your shot. Well, you know, you can't come over here. That's love waxing cold. It's waxing cold. Well, this means that there will be few that will be willing to give up all for the sake of Christ. Do you know you have to give up all? All of your plans, you have to give it up for Christ. Huh. All of your plans, you give it up for Christ. And whatever he wants to do is what you have to do. But you know, most of the time, your plans are based on a deficit. <laughs> your desire is tied to trauma, dysfunction, or a deficit. And you created that plan in your head so that you could rise above whatever it was you were dealing with. Feel better about yourself. This is my goal. This is my plan. Christ comes and says, nope, you can't do that. What? That's what I need to do. No, you're doing that based on the devil and what the devil did to you. I want you to do it based on what I'm doing for you. That's what Christ is saying. This is what I'm going to do for you. And what Christ gives you is going to satisfy you. Do you know you can't satisfy a deficit? You can't satisfy dysfunction. You can't satisfy trauma. You can't satisfy any of those. You'll continue to try to put things there. But you still have to deal with that. And only Christ can transform the heart. So if you have a damaged heart, you have to bring that heart to the one that can repair it. You can go sit in front of a shrink all you want, but the shrink can't get to the heart. Because the shrink didn't make the heart. Only Christ can repair a broken. He said a broken and a contrite heart. I will not despise. So when your heart is broken, you take it to the manufacturer. He gave you a warranty. The warranty is salvation. <laughs> you like that? I know you like that, son. That warranty. Fix it for free. He already paid for it. So I don't want to hear about your dreams and this is what this is my dream. This is what I always wanted to be. That's based on the devil and what the devil did. And you got to give that up and give that to God. Matthew 24 and 12 tells us, no, today there are so many that have abandoned this kind of agape love. Matthew 24 and 12 says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many. Show us. So it's telling you why the love of many is going to wax cold because sin is going to abound. So the more sin, y'all believe sin is abounding? Y'all saw the, 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 the gay male chorus? Did y'all see that in San Francisco? All them dudes singing, singing about turning your little boys out. Well, you won't see it now because it got taken off because most of them was sex offenders. Now how you gonna advertise and get on there and <laughs> you just dumb. Gay and dumb. Gay them. That's gay them. <laughs> I made a pun. 
Yeah, but they, they, that's how bad it is. Iniquity, sin is just abounding. Everything is centered around it. So the love of many, in order for people to get that sin, they have to hurt people. Because of trauma, dysfunctional upbringings, etc., people are growing up with serious deficits. These deficits affect us well into our adult years. And if not addressed, you're going to be a dumb adult. The only thing worse than a fool is a what? An old fool. That means he's stuck like that. So these deficits affect us well into our adult years. And if not addressed, can change the way we perceive love. I'm the type of person, I'm analytical in my mind, so I wonder how people can be bitter and disgruntled. And just the type of person people don't like. Always talking about somebody. And always, uh, da, 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 da. you know, just some old creepy person. Every time I come around, how you doing? <laughs> Calls and mess. Spreading rumors. Just that kind of person. Like, how can you be that way? Don't you face yourself at night? Do you think, man, I am really jacking life up. That's what I would do. I examine myself. So I'm thinking, man, I need to take a good look at myself to make sure I'm not that person. So I don't understand. Yeah, we all have some kind of trauma, dysfunctional upbringings, or whatever, but why would you not let God fix that? Yeah, folks sit right here in this church. And oh, I just, I, I, I just want to leave. What you gonna leave and do? I, I, I just, I just can't. I don't, don't, don't want to be a. I, I just don't want to be saved. I mean, I don't, I don't want to. Y'all, y'all holding me back. Y'all stopping me from doing stuff. I mean, it's stuff out there I want to do. You know, people tell me that. So what you want to do? That's just stuff I need. I, y'all just, it's too, y'all stopping me from just becoming who I want to be and do what I. Okay, then they get out there and just become some old freak. <laughs> Just wilding out on the internet and just foolishness. And, just, and I'm like, is that what you wanted to leave and go do? We was keeping you from making a fool out of yourself. Amen. But folks just, ah, oh, yeah, well, you know, I mean, I want the club. I ain't getting the club. Then they ain't drinking. Then they cussing. Then they have sex. Then they just, that's the life you wanted. That's the life you want. That, that's what the message in this church was keeping you from. Yeah. Debauchery. Yeah. You want debauchery. Yeah. Then they get out there, do the food, act up, leave. And then when they get a little older, they come back. Y'all don't do what I did. <laughs> don't worry, we won't. <laughs> We tried to stop you from doing it. <laughs> These deficits are going to affect you well into your adult years if you don't address them. First John 4 and 20. If, if a man say, I love God, and he hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath not seen, how can he love God, whom he hath seen? This is important because sin, dysfunction, all of these things... Make you blame someone and take it out on someone, which will force you into that life of iniquity. You blaming your father, you blaming stuff that happened, you blaming somebody's actions. You can't love your brother. And if you can't love your, bro your brother, the Bible just said you can't love God. Now, I'm preaching basic stuff in here, and I've been doing this for weeks and weeks because... When they come after the Christians and the believers and all of this stuff, because you know, we, they, they ready to counsel all of us now. Like they online looking for us now. Now we are the enemy. Those of us that have been enlightened by truth. We're the enemy. So we have to make sure we have the basic foundation of what it is to be a Christian. Solid. When persecution comes, you got to stand on the solid rock. 
If the rock isn't solid, if the foundation isn't solid, the Bible said the winds and the waves, the voices and the whispers, the mandates, they will blow you away. So it's time to fortify it. How do you fortify it? Forgive somebody. Go make that right with somebody. Stop talking about somebody. Go love someone. Fix these things in your heart. You know, the church spent too many years with the music and the shouting and the dance. Everybody bucking and just, I'll be going crazy. And nobody's addressing the issues that they have with each other. I mean, folk bucking, bucking, and bumping and somebody don't like, oh, oh. Let me go buck over here. What? What you bucking for? Quit all that Yeah, it's time to turn the music off, man. I know the organ sound good, but man, y'all need to just be still and love each other. That's why nobody wanted. That's why they at home now. Oh, I'm going on church in Zoom. I'm going on Zoom. Well, they lifted the mandate. You can actually go and be there. Well, we just decided. You decided not to fellowship. Y'all don't like each other. I know I'm preaching. Selfishness is, has, is causing many to put themselves before others, which leads to them putting themselves before God as well. You put yourself before others, you put yourself before God. This posture leads to a life of unfulfilled prayers and discontent. Satisfying yourself is impossible without God's purpose being fulfilled. Yeah. So you'll just keep trying. Matthew 16 and 24, then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, he must first do what? So satisfying yourself, you'll never be satisfied. It'll never be enough. It will never be enough. And then when you finally get it, there's regret. Who did I hurt and what did I do to get here? Was it worth it? God showed me that few months ago, I, well, I told y'all about this. Folk, some folks are mad at me right now just because they made the choice to not listen. And now they're at an age where they feel it's irreversible or it will cause too much shame to admit to what they should have done. Gonna keep preaching? Y'all enjoying this? Only those that love the way God loves are fit to be used by him. When you seek to please yourself and get what you want, you miss God's plan. Look at somebody say, it's not about you. It's never been about you. It's always about someone else. Yeah. yeah. You got to love someone else. Only those that love the way God loves are fit to be used by him. When you seek to please yourself and get what you want, you miss God's plan. His plan leads to peace and your plan leads to regret. Yeah. Our own ways and plans cannot satisfy us. Our purpose is from God and that alone approves our existence. You know what God showed me? Sometimes you have to pray spirits off you so you can even hear what I'm saying. I mean, in the spirit realm, a gremlin is sitting on your shoulders with his green, hairy hands covering your ears. All I'm talking, and you just nod. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And you can't hear anything I'm saying. You have to have ears to hear, according to the Bible. Yeah. And in 2021, you got to pray for that. You got to break stuff off. The wrong person could have just came into your life with witchcraft to block your hearing. Yeah. People sitting in here and I'm preaching and they look at, hey man, and then one day I come in, I'm preaching and they just look at me. Like, oh yeah, okay. The gremlin is here. Yeah. Sit in here. Or sit next to you just chattering the whole service to distract you. It's a demon. That's a demon. <laughs> I remember this. 
And you just sitting there like, oh, somebody get this grim lighting. You know, when we was growing up, you didn't do that in church. You just heard pop. What was that? Teeth bleeding. <laughs> they hit you in your mouth when I was growing up. It'd, a, it'd be a stranger too. Pop. Come tell your mom after uh, that blood. I did that. <laughs> what was she doing? Yeah, that's that old scene. They don't know about that. What was she doing? She was talking during the service. Oh, okay. Well. Now don't try that. This is Texas. You might hear another pop after that. <laughs> a pow. <laughs> yeah, but that's a demon. That's a demon. While the word is going, y'all believe it's the word? While the word is going forth. While they just chewing and popping gum real loud. <laughs> Can't sit still. Or they just moving. <laughs> just be sitting like, man. It's a distraction to keep you from hearing the truth. Amen. The only thing the devil is afraid of is the word. Now think about this. The devil and Jesus is on the mountain. Jesus goes into the mode where he's fighting against the devil. How did he fight the enemy on the mountain? What did he use? The word. That tells me that that's the most potent and powerful weapon we have against him. Amen. He set that up for a reason. The devil did not stand up there and talk to him. But he wanted you to see him talking to him. And he wanted to see the, you to see the method he used to get rid of him. He used the word. That means the word is precious. Especially when it's going forth. It's, it's precious when it's being spoken. And so the devil will come to try to distract you. And keep you from hearing it. Or he'll put something on you. This is the one thing he puts on people the most. Shame. Yeah, he'll have you fall into sin or something, doing something you shouldn't have done. Then when you come in church, you can't even hear the message because you're thinking about how you messed up. And worried about if somebody going to see it on you. See, they don't, they don't know that old school church. You in church. How you doing, brother? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> Why you backing up? <laughs> You think they see it. I've had people ask me, hey, Paz, how you doing? Uh, do, you, do, you, do you see anything going on? No? Should I? And I don't want to see it. I'm not as here to prove I'm super spiritual about your life. Go repent and quit doing it. Amen. Just repent and quit doing it. It's a story of life. You will live to see another day most of the time. Depending on what you did. <laughs> you might not see another day of daylight. Depending on what you did. Yeah! <laughs> Our own ways and plans cannot satisfy us. Our purpose is from God. And that alone approves our existence. So this is where God wants you to get. He wants you to quit trying to get out there, chasing whatever you're chasing, striving, however you're striving to be this or be that or whatever. He wants you to stop doing all that because all of that is based on the devil's dysfunction. He wants his purpose for you to approve your existence. That's the only thing that's going to satisfy you. Amen? I can honestly say, I'm good. I'm good with where God has me. I'm good with what he's doing. All that because this is my purpose. But it's not just about ministry. I'm good because my family is good. That's what I was created for. Ministry came after the fall, but I was created to take care of her. See, folk ain't going to clap on that part. Make sure these kids are okay. That's what I was created for. Proverbs 16 and 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is what? Until a person learns how to die to their own desires, they will continuously, oh, mix, oh, I hate this mix, mix the plan of God with their own plans and desires. So that's when they go to stamping God on it. God told me, God showed me, told me, showed me, God led me, told me, showed me. I said, you haven't talked to anybody else. Why would I talk to anybody else? God directly told me, and showed. brother, you might need to sit down and get some wise counsel. Bounce that off a couple of folks. 
Look, see, there we go. Everybody want that, everybody want that island of Patmos relationship with the Lord. <laughs> but some things you will only hear from a man. It's just by, by eight folks said amen over here. You said it, okay. Yeah, something God is not going to just delete the need for men. God could have told Moses, Moses, get the elders and, and, and elect the elders so that they can take care of all of these problems so that you won't be exasperated and tired and worn down and want to give up. So, so just report your elders. God didn't tell him. Who told him? Jethro, a man. God wanted a man to tell him that. That's wisdom from a man. Why? Because what I, we don't know Jethro's whole story, but obviously he went through some things to gain that wisdom so that that wisdom could work for the kingdom. So you can't delete another person's purpose for your own purpose. All of it works together, jointly fit together according to the word. Some folks been through some, through some things you, you've never been through, but they've been through them to help you get through other things in your life. You have to have people. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So until you learn to, desire, to die to your own desires, they will continually mix the plan of God with their own plans and desires. This creates a very prideful person. So that's the prideful person that won't listen to nobody. Amen. And you can't tell them nothing. Look at somebody and say, don't be like that. Be able to receive rebuke. Be able to be reproved. Be able to be admonished. Be able, so someone older, the Bible said for the older men to teach the younger men. Older women to teach the younger women. How's that going to happen if you're prideful? And think you know. Amen. Be able. Can I keep going? Yeah. Proverbs 13 and 10. Only by pride cometh what? Contention. But with the well advised, who advised them? Well advised is what? Don't you want to be well advised? Yeah. People in my life I hold dear, precious. When certain things come up, their phone is ringing. Because I want to be advised. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that. I ain't dealt with it. Whatever. Yeah, I can go pray and fast till my lips turn white and get before the Lord and get all that. And I'm still not going to get it. Because God put that in a man. He put that in someone because they went through something to get that. So it's precious in them. And I have to value it. Oh, y'all don't want it. Hey, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Because we are in a flesh body. How many of y'all in a flesh body? Hey, I hope everybody in here is in a flesh body. Amen. <laughs> we are all in a, because we are in a flesh body we must deny ourselves daily and make sure we are not living for ourselves but for the will of God you get before God and ask him God am I living for myself show me the ways I'm living for myself I want to live for you I want to give you myself wholly what part of me am I not surrendering to you and he's going to show you and usually he's not going to tell you then. Somebody is going to tell you. Mm -hmm. See, that's the beauty of a fellowship. You just went to shake their hand. How you doing? You know, I really think you need to quit talking about people so much. But you had just prayed for God to show you. Uh, see, they don't know. That's okay. That's all right, amen. You go do what you want to do out there. You go be who you want to be. Be all that you can be. I'm just telling you how it's going to come. That's the way church used to be. Folks scared to say stuff now, whatever, whatever. But it used to be like that. You would pray that, God, just show me myself. Show me what I need to do. And the phone, you'd be in a conversation with somebody, and they just get quiet. You're like, what? What? Well, you know, when you do that right there, man, I just, 
That's really not becoming a Christian. You ought to really check that. Whoa, whoa. But you prayed for that. Don't pray it if you're not going to change. Amen. Because God's going to, he's going to show you. Amen. Oh, I'm sure Moses was praying that he wouldn't get exhausted and get burned out on doing the will of God. And God sent an answer through Jethro. This is how you do it, young man. To spare yourself. And you know, a lot of us, a lot, lot of you didn't grow up with your father, so you're not used to hearing that or hearing that fatherly love or whatever, so you really don't trust men like that. But you have, God is going to, if you pray for God to bring the right voices in your life, he will. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I mean, but how can I trust them? Trust them. What if they hurt me? Then you hurt. You've been hurt before, right? Did you get over it? You still living? Oh, yeah. Well, Romans 8 and 13. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if the spirit you are putting to death and the deeds of the body, you will live. So you can't live for what you want to do and who you want to be. You got to get before the Lord and say, take it. Amen. Amen. When I thought I was going to be a musical person. In the industry and all of that. I got before God and God said, get rid of all your stuff and stop doing music. Oh, Beelzebub. <laughs> you know, we always blame that on Beelzebub. That's me. No, no, no. Quit doing all that. No, no, no. Quit doing that. Go get a job. Just, just don't even worry about it. But I had no idea God would bring all of that back his way. He had a different way he wanted me to do it. A total different way. And it is way more fun this way. Amen. Wait. Oh, man. I can't wait to make music now. Write the songs for the church and the studio, all that. What? And not in the studio late at night with a bunch of creatures from the Whack Lagoon? Gaze just tearing at your flesh? That's a whole bunch of monsters. I had them studio sessions. I'd be like, man, this is like the night of the living dead in here. But God just changed it. He knew he was, if you do it my way. But he didn't even tell me that I would ever do it again. I just had to trust him with it. In other words, just give it to me. Here, get rid of it. Do you love me enough to get rid of it? And when I gave it all up, he gave me the vision for EX ministry. I started preaching, traveling, doing all of that. Then we start, ended up Start the church, and then after all of that, he was like, okay, now you're ready to do music. Amen. Yeah. And with the vision, he gave me what? Provision. Now you got the money, you can do whatever you want to do. You know, a struggling musician start doing stuff because he's struggling. <laughs> Amen. Can I preach to y'all in here? Summary. This is a very important story. Oh, we early too. Peter was a man that thought he loved Christ more than everyone else. Y'all remember Peter? He bragged on his love and even went to great lengths to prove his love by cutting the ear off a soldier. Now that, he, that's just jive. You ain't taking Jesus. That's my best friend. I love him. Too. You're not taking him. Mm -hmm. Okay, Peter. Peter swore that he could never betray Christ because he loved him so much. Everybody talks about Judas. Nobody talk about Peter's betrayal. Peter betrayed Christ. His love was a pride field, selfish love, and not a godly love. He wasn't ready to do what? The last thing to go, his reputation. He wasn't ready. Oh, you was with Jesus, weren't you? Reputation. Nah, nah, Doc. Nah, Doc. Hmm, you sure? I thought I saw you 
with him. Wasn't me. Mm -hmm. He wasn't ready to give up that reputation. Who he thought people thought he was. And we know that because when they were arguing at the table of who was the greatest, he thought he was the greatest. He was worried about what people thought. You know if you worry about what people think, you're going to stay worried. <laughs> yeah, if you walk around worried about what people think all the time, you're going to be worried all the time. Because people are going to always think. <laughs> yeah. And do you know it's easy to find something wrong with you? So if they don't like you, they can find something wrong. And you worried about that? A cantankerous person like that that's picking you apart because they hate themselves? Amen. And I ain't worried about that. Dude, you can just go on somewhere else with that. If Jesus like me, I don't care what you think. Amen. He wasn't in love with Christ at all. He wasn't ready to give up everything, so he wasn't in love with Christ. That's when you're in love with a person, when you're ready to give up everything for him. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm going there. Oh, you should see some of these folks' faces, Elder. You need to turn around. Because they know, they know this equation. They know where this is going. You got to be willing to give up everything if you love them. So in your marriage, you got to be ready to give up your pride, your feelings, if you love them. That's right. I'm going to stay right here now. I'm going to stay right here now. You don't have to like them all the time. But if you love them, you're willing to give up everything for them. I, I don't have to be tested in this area because I already, like, like Martin Luther King said, I already been to the mountaintop. I done seen it. <laughs> but right now, I promise you, man, if I went broke and had to live under a bridge, guess who would be right there with me, helping me push the basket? <laughs> this one. She would be right here. And y'all know she would. Like, some of y'all wish she wouldn't. Because you know you wouldn't. But she, you know this woman right here would. She loves me. For better or for worse. And we done had some worse. But she, she that's how she looked. And that's, that's what it means to love somebody. You got to be willing to give up. Nothing else matters more than them. That's the problem. Folks can't love God because they don't even know how to love people right. They don't even know how to love their wife or their husband like this. There's always something they're holding back and won't give up. So when it comes to Christ, you've got to be willing to give it up. How dare you hold on to a worldly affection? And he's given his life for the world. Peter wasn't in love with Christ. He was in love. <laughs> he was in love with the power of Christ. Yeah, some people in your life right now, they don't like you. They like how you make them feel. I learned that the hard way. Folks was in love with the power of EX Ministries. And not me. Amen. Yeah, they were in love with Christ. They was in love with how he made him. Could you imagine what it felt like to be with Christ? I mean, a dude that could just do anything. So they were in love with the power of Christ and how being with Christ made him feel. This is Peter. Just being with him made him feel a certain way. But it was surface. It wasn't in his heart. Because when it was time to say how much you really love being with him, you denied him. If he really loved Christ, he would not have denied it. Can I keep going? Peter had a change of heart. Man, this message is heavy. I feel it. It's thick in here. Quit looking at me like that. Yeah, this is heart, man. It's about the heart. You're saved through your heart. So if something's wrong with your heart, something's wrong with your life. Peter had a change of heart. 
after he learned that his love was superficial and not spiritual. So Peter decided to just give up all, including his clothes. The Bible said he was just on the beach buck naked. Buck, that's, that's it, right? Said it right. <laughs> yeah, he's on the beach just buck naked, just, just wilding. I don't know what he was doing. He was just there. But he had given up everything, obviously. If he was naked, he didn't care who saw it, what folks thought at this point. Because he knew he had wronged the Savior. So he was somewhere feeling terrible. And Christ appeared to him. The Bible said he jumped up and took off running naked. Peter had no shame. He gave up shame, everything. He could care less at this point. Yeah! His reputation, he had already given it up. You know, that meant you were a madman back then. So if you were naked and running through the city or on the beach, wherever you was running, they considered you a madman. That was a sign of it. So he didn't care if folk thought he was mad. He saw Christ, hey, Jesus! <laughs> Christ, Christ came to him and told him that if he really loved him, give up your own life for my people. Ask him three times for the three times he betrayed him. He asked him three times, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Peter then became a great witness for Christ and died upholding his name. Because he gave up his own wants and needs for the needs of God's people. Giving up our lives for others is the what? Highest place that we can get to in Christ. Now you worried about, amen. And you worried about holding on to this dumb stuff and holding on to your feelings and won't forgive and this and that and none of that stuff matters. God wants to free you from that so that you can be like him in the highest place by giving up your life for him. Okay, here comes the real good part. And then I'm going to close. We're going to move from Peter to Paul. Paul said that he gave up all and counted that as gain. Meaning I gave up everything I had, but I actually gained by giving it up. Listen, we must remember that whatever we give up for Christ's sake will be returned to us what? Now, this, this has been perverted so much by church because they try to use this at offering time. And that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about just giving up what you want to do for Christ. You'll get from God 100 fold. A hundred times the happiness you thought you was going to get doing it your way. A hundred times the joy you get. A hundred times the peace you would have had doing it your way. God is not punishing us for serving him. He is trying to get us to invest and then reap 100 times the investment. Now quit looking at it as money. Oh, but I gave him $10. How much is that? Quit looking. This is not about money. People look at giving up things for Christ with the wrong perspective. <laughs> Whatever you give up will be multiplied and then returned. This is a blessing of God. So if you go before God, take my plans and give it to God. He's going to give you a hundred times better life than you would have had had you done that. 100. I know my life is 100 times better. I get in the bed, I sleep at night. I don't worry. I don't look over my shoulder and just, ooh. <laughs> life full of creeping in. I don't do that. I have peace. Same dudes grew up with me. They just up at 3 a.m. texting, hey man, can you sleep? Yeah, I can sleep. I can do what you did. My life is better than yours. Folks don't like to hear that. They think I'm bragging. No, no, man, I'm getting a hundredfold because I decided to give that junk up and serve God and give it to God. And he's blessed me with a hundred times the peace that you will ever see doing it your way. 
Yeah, there's trials. Yeah, there's tribulations. Yeah, we're going to suffer persecution. But at the end of the day, the peace of God is there. And it's more peace than you would have gotten your way. So whatever you give up will be multiplied and then returned. This is a blessing of God and we must tap into it. There is nothing in this earth more precious to God than us. And he is willing to bless us if we only what? Obey him. Folk don't want to tie blessings to obedience. They want to tie it to giving. And yeah, there's a blessing that comes from giving. Of course there is. The law of reciprocity, reaping and sowing. Of course there is. But the real blessing he's talking about here is your life. Living your life. Because your life is precious to him. So you got to tie obedience to blessings. If I do it his way, he will bless me. Some of y'all, I mean, you know, and I'm going to say it. You're so sure of what it is you're doing. You just believe you're supposed to be doing it. But then there's areas of your life where blessing won't come. Things you're praying for and it will not come. You need to test what you're doing and see if this is what God wants me to do. You ain't never done that. You pray about it. You know, that's our thing. Let me pray about it. You pray about it, but it's on the table. What if you take it off the table? Pray about taking it off the table. Maybe it's something you don't need to be doing. And it's blocking that blessing. God is holding that blessing back until you give that up. There is nothing in this earth more precious to God than us. And he is willing to bless us if we only obey him. We must learn that if we love our lives, then we do not have the love of God in us. But if we love Christ enough to give up our lives for him, then we are in a place to be what? Used by him. Mark 10, 29 and 31. And there's nothing wrong with you believe in this passage right here. You know, you know, when they doing the prosperity preach and all that, they, they pervert scripture sometimes to where you don't even want to read them no more. You just want to stay away from it because you just heard it wrong. Have to do with money. All, everything have to do with inheritance and all that kind of stuff. No, no, no. This is a blessed scripture. And I trusted God with this scripture. Not that I was looking for God to give me anything. I just wanted God to give me the feeling that I felt I was going to have if I had done it my way. Lord, give me a better feeling than that. If I give this up, show me exactly what I'm supposed to be doing so I can have peace. That was my deal with the Lord. Like you, you, He came to me, asked me for the music, everything. I'm going to give it all to you. But I need you to give me what it is you want from me. Yeah. And that's why when I gave it all up, that's when he gave me the vision. Y'all know EX Ministries is still going. How many years ago was that? That was many years ago. 20, 20 something. And it's still going. We still reordering part one. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what God wanted me to do. Do it. Do this. But I had to move everything out of the way. And I couldn't even move it with an expectancy. I just had to move it because he said move it. You know, your father told you things when you were young that you just didn't understand. Your mother told you things you just didn't understand. Why? Because you were young. It wasn't time for you to understand it. You had to just trust them. You can't do that. But why? Well, we, we couldn't say that. That's a whooping. You know, my mom would give you one why. Just so she could say, because I said it. Then the next why, that's, that's the whooping. <laughs> yeah. But you got to be willing. Listen to this scripture. And then I'm closing. Mark 10 and 29, 29 through 31. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brother or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, and the gospels. But he shall receive what? This is not talking about heaven. 
It's not talking about when he comes and gets us. No, 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 no. He's specific. He shall receive a hundredfold win. Now. Look at somebody say right now. Now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with, per with persecution now. You're going to have haters. Folks aren't going to understand the blessings on your life. So you're going to have persecutions. But you're going to get all of that in the world to come eternal life. So you're going to get a hundredfold in this time and then in the world to come eternal life. Can't say it. A hundredfold in eternal life. Eternal is eternal. So the hundredfold had to mean now. But many that are first shall be last. So can you be last? Can you be last? Can you take last? Because the person that takes last gets the hundredfold. So in that argument, in that disagreement, can you be last? <laughs> in that conflict, can you take last? Because last going to get you hundredfold. When everybody's worried about what everybody has and possessions and stuff. Can you be last? I'm not the one talking about what I have and who has what and whatever. I'm going to be last because I'm going to trust God. Because God said, whatever I give up, even that disposition, if I take last, I'll be first. Everyone stand to your feet. This message is just one of those hard sayings messages because it's a whole lot easier to say than do. Because many of us have just cemented who we feel we should be in our lives. And many of us have just bought into who we think we are and whatever. That, you know, that's something that's understood. I don't take that before the Lord. There's no need to be taking that for the Lord. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm, I'm really sure who I should be and this and that. And so... Breaking up that fallow ground, busting that up, you know, it's just not an option for some people. But I think everyone should self-examine themselves and make sure that the course you are on is God's rightful course. Because something is stopping the blessings that you are believing God for. Something is in the way. It's time to evaluate. Because if you don't evaluate, when the winds and the waves come, when the government comes, when the, the, the pandemic and everything else that's happening around us, when all this stuff comes and targets the believers or whatever, your foundation is what's going to be tested. And if you're not sure, if there are cracks, then you might crumble. So we want to make sure, y'all, in this message that we are loving God with our entire life. Can we do that? Everyone bow your heads all over the building. This is your time to self-evaluate. If you want to come up, you can. Come on. You, you can just come up. If that's you, if you just, hey, self-evaluation time, putting this before God, tired of block blessings, tired of this prayer just hitting the air and falling down. I need results. There must be something. There is something. So I don't even want to be that sure about Right now, I'm ready to just lay it before the Lord. Lay it before the Lord. So I can make sure I'm in the rightful place. I'm seeking this thing from God. I'm wanting this from God. I'm needing this from God. But something is in the way. Something's in the way. It just won't happen. It hadn't happened. Can't make it happen. Something's in the way. But I want to give it up now. Give it up. That's loving him with your life. He loved you that way. He loved you with his very life. He gave up his life to show you his love. And he gave his life to you. So that he could live within you. But he gave it up. So that's what we're going to do. Give up your life. Give it up. No matter what people will think. No matter what people have said. Just give it up. He'll return 100-fold the right way. 
Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for each and every one of these believers that have come forth. We thank you, Lord, for just their heart to be touched in 2021, to still be sensitive and touched by your spirit, God. In this time, Father God, when all kinds of witness, uh, wickedness and dark matter and darkness and all the things that are in our atmosphere, all the things that are in our world, all the things that are floating around in our phones, all of this stuff that's out here, they still have a sensitivity in this time to your gospel, your truth, and your love, and they can feel you. They can recognize you, and they desire you. So I thank you, Lord. Thank you for each and every heart that is present, every heart that has come up, every heart, Father God. And I ask right now, God, that that same tenderness that they have to respond will be the tenderness you use to reward. Speak to their hearts, Lord. Speak to them, God. Speak to them. Speak past the deficit. Speak past the dysfunction. Speak past the issue. Speak past the hurt. Speak past what happened to them. Speak past the, the, the upbringing. Speak past all of those things, God, and let them hear you clearly. Give them direction which way their lives should go. No matter what their plans were, no matter what their plans are, no matter what they are doing right now, if it's not what you want, God, They'll give it up. They'll give it up. They came here to this altar for the power to give it up. So God, I speak it right now into their lives. Give them the courage. Father God, give them the spiritual fortitude to say no, to walk away. If that is your desire. Speak to their hearts, Lord. Speak to their hearts. I speak against every hindrance right now, every spiritual hindrance, hindrance, every wicked imagination that is coming right now to try to stop and block the power of God. I speak against it right now in the name of Jesus with the authority God has given me in this place. Every foul spirit, every demon, every entity that will block the progression of the saints of God, you are cast down right now in the name of Jesus every wicked imagination even the ones that are laughing and jeering right now I cast it down in the name of Jesus I don't care how young you are I cast you down right now in the name of Jesus your time's up you won't keep doing this I cast it down, every distraction right now in the name of Jesus, that the power of God will be able to move freely among his people. I counsel all witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Let God move the way he wants to move. Every home, every heart, every man, every woman. Receive what God has for you right now. No hindrance. Receive it in your heart. In Jesus' name. Come on, all of the building, let's just lift up your hands. Right now, God, we receive what you have. Your instruction. However it may come. However it will come. Let your instruction come to us. That we will be led by the Spirit. And we will do the things that are pleasing to you. Not because we're going to get a hundredfold but because it is your will and because it is what you want and because we want to be pleasing to you, Lord, in this hour. Teach us how to please you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All that God has for you. Hallelujah. Listen, before I let you go back, remember this. You heard me saying some things. You got to say these things. When you're in your home, you got to speak against the powers that be. You got to speak against the spiritual wickedness in high places. You got to cancel stuff out. You got to cleanse the atmosphere with the authority God has given you. Some things are blocked just because certain spirits are around and you haven't addressed them. You just have to do it. I, I, man, I felt it in here. 
I felt it in here. When you're praying to the Lord, when you're talking to the Lord, you got to cancel this stuff. There's noise. There's chatter. There are things that are keeping you and blocking what God has for you. Amen? So go in peace of the Lord. Cancel every evil spirit. Matter of fact, just hug somebody and say, I'm going to do this the way God wants me to do it. The way God wants what God has for me. Hallelujah. As you're going back to your seat, come on, come on. Hug somebody. Tell them. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus fought the devil with the word. He spoke the word. So you speak the word. Jesus spoke the word to the devil. So you speak the word to the demons. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Elder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.